scientists can party just as well as everybody else. People can party in other ways without holding up scientific research. Last Sunday, in the newspapers, there was a story about helium running short. Helium is really important for all sorts of scientific experiments, like the Large Hadron Collider. And the reason it's running short is because everybody is filling their party balloons and there isn't enough being left for doing science. It's really strange that one could run short of helium because it's the second most abundant element in the universe. There are unimaginable masses of helium, but the problem is that there's not very much helium on Earth because helium atoms are very light, far lighter than the molecules of air. And once they're in the atmosphere, they diffuse up to the edge of the atmosphere and out into space. And gravity is not strong enough to keep them here. So this is a balloon of helium, and helium is a very small gas. We use it in this case to find leaks in high pressure and high air and vacuum apparatus because it's very, very small. Finds the smallest, smallest holes. The helium that we have on Earth has come from the decay of radioactive elements deep in the Earth, and it's found in some deposits of natural gas. And until recently, helium has been separated from that natural gas and stockpiled. About 20 years ago, in the early 1990s, America, which had been stockpiling helium since the 1920s, started to sell off the stockpiles, so the price went right down and it became very cheap to fill balloons. And at the same time, people started making balloons out of this metallic, um, metallized plastic, the sort of silver balloons that you see everywhere, which hold the helium for a long time, so you can sell them in shops. In a rubber balloon, the helium comes out so quickly that nobody wants to buy them. And the result is that we're just wasting this helium. Helium is important scientifically as liquid helium, which boils at four degrees absolute. That's minus 269 centigrade, and is one of the best coolants, and is particularly important for cooling so-called superconducting magnets, those that are used for magnetic resonance imaging machines that's used in the Large Hadron Colliders. And it's also very important for cooling scientific samples if you want to do low temperature measurements. As part of my doctorate, I used liquid helium occasionally, and I had a special machine that could make the helium in my experiment. And today I went down to the stores to fetch it. I haven't used it for nearly 40 years. So what happens here is that this part is a thermos flask, which you can fill with liquid nitrogen to low temperature. And then there's a fine tube going down here, which takes high pressure helium and allows it to come out through a nozzle. So it comes out of the nozzle and expands. When it expands through this nozzle, it undergoes what is called Joule-Thompson cooling and it cools and liquefies. When I used this equipment, it consumed huge amounts of helium, which was really expensive. And once the gas had gone through here, it was just blown out into the atmosphere and wasted. But I did perhaps altogether half a dozen experiments, which were really important to my work. But normally I used hydrogen, which had a higher temperature, but was much cheaper. Nowadays, at this university, people don't blow off helium when they're using it to cool it. But instead, we have pipes going from the labs to a central liquefier so we can circulate the helium round and round so it's not wasted. So now I'm going to take you to have a look at the liquefier and see how it's done. I've never been there before, so it's really quite exciting. The entrance looks quite unexciting, but just wait. So this is probably the largest thermos flask you've ever seen. It's certainly the largest one I've seen. And this is where the liquid helium is stored. It holds 3,000 litres of liquid helium. That's nearly $20,000 worth of helium if you wanted to buy it. So 
All the labs that use liquid helium round the campus are connected to this building by plastic pipes. And you can see them coming in here. And each pipe has a gas meter on it so that you can measure the amount of gas coming back. Now that's very important because the people doing the experiment get money for returning the gas. And if they didn't get that money, they would just waste it. And once it's been through the meter, it goes into that big balloon. And this balloon is really big. You can see hundreds of cubic feet. And that amount of gas will make really a tiny amount of liquid, enough to fill the volume of about 16 bottles of this size, so about 12 litres of liquid helium. That balloon doesn't hold nearly enough gas in order to run the liquefier, so there's some intermediate stages. Let's go and look. So we're now in the compressor room, where there are two compressors here which compress the gas from the balloon so that it can be stored more efficiently. And so now, once the gas is compressed, it is sent into some storage tanks. And those storage tanks are really quite impressive, though I have to be quite thin to get there. And these are the tanks. And you can see they're huge. And these tanks contain the impure helium that's come from people's experiments, because they always get a bit of air and that sort of stuff into the helium. Not very much, but that would be enough completely to ruin the liquefier because at the very low temperature the air would freeze and block everything up. Then, at the second stage, this impure gas goes to the liquefier, which part of which can purify the gas and then pump it into this tank here, which holds highly purified helium. When this tank is full, to not a terribly high pressure, perhaps 11 atmospheres, then it senses, its pressure gauges, sends a message to the liquefier that we're ready to liquefy the gas. So the gas, when it leaves the white tank, goes into another compressor, which is a clean compressor, which is back in the same room here. The clean helium compressor is inside this box, so you can't see it. And it's meant to make a terrible noise, but fortunately it's not on at the moment. And this box uses more electricity than the, any other piece of equipment on the whole of our university campus. So it uses an eighth of a megawatt of electricity when it is running. So it is a very powerful machine. And the reason it needs to is because helium is quite hard to compress. So once the gas has been compressed, highly pure, it comes back here to the liquefier. And this liquefier uses Joule-Thompson expansion, just like the instrument that I showed you on the desk in my office. And this can produce 40 litres of liquid helium each hour. So that's quite a serious amount. So it can produce, if you like, three balloon worths, or perhaps even nearly four balloon worths of gas can be liquefied in an hour. And all the liquid is then stored in this tank. And when the scientists are ready to use the liquid helium, it is transshipped into one of these smaller dewars, which is then taken back to the departments chemistry, the magnetic resonance imaging centre or the physics department and the whole cycle begins again. The helium goes into the equipment and it then boils back through the pipes and into the balloon. So when this system is working really well, 95% of the gas is recycled. So now, something I've never seen before, I'm going to be shown liquid helium coming out of the tank. There you go. So here's the liquid coming out and it's immediately vaporizing. It's really very cold. And if I breathe it in, my voice may go a little higher. But we mustn't waste too much because it will go into the atmosphere and be lost into outer space.
by far the largest assembly of superconducting magnets in the world is at the Large Hadron Collider where these magnets are all around the 27 kilometer long tunnel and Brady went there a few weeks ago and he showed me photos of huge tanks of liquid helium that they have at the Large Hadron Collider. When it's never running out of helium it's just the price goes up and also there may be hiccups in supply. In this article it describes some really quite expensive equipment which because of shortage of helium isn't running on a number of days and because they have all the staff and everything else this is really quite a waste of money and one wouldn't mind if the helium was being used for a really sensible reason but if it's just being used for partying people can party in other ways without holding up scientific research and particularly without endangering the measurements of MRI scans which are used in hospitals for all sorts of medical treatments. But surely scientists don't want to be seen as the party poopers. Scientists can party just as well as everybody else. Helium, fantastic element, very light, very fun. But you can fill balloons with hydrogen but then they explode so if you smoke so I would suggest that you can still have a really good time without helium balloons at a party.